Hi, welcome to my channel. In today's video, we are going to go through top news. I am having problems with my camera at the moment, so just bear with me. In today's video, I will not be sharing my face as I share the news, <laughs> which is probably a good thing because I'm very tired. Anyway, let's jump right into it. Okay, at the time of this video, Bitcoin is at $71,834. We know that recently, according to uh, data and pro traders like Sheldon Sniper, I would recommend you go follow him. I'm not endorsed. I don't earn anything for saying this. Uh, we know that um, Bitcoin has broken through. So this is the last 24 hours. The last seven days, it's broken through. And many are projecting, like Ivan on Tech, which is another big thought leader in the crypto space, that Bitcoin could easily break through and rally up to $90,000. Um, as of now, Bitcoin is following historical um, trends since we are under two weeks before the halving. Um, and traditionally around this time, Bitcoin would break out. And it looks like it's doing the same this time. And here, just some more news on Grayscale. Grayscale, as many of you may know, is owned by Michael Saylor, who owns a company called uh, MicroStrategy and Grayscale. And this is just some information that basically the key information that you should extract from this tweet that indicates how many inflows and outflows it had is essentially the power of it. You know, the inflows or, or the amount of purchases rather that have come in since the ETFs were approved has not slowed down. And that is so, so powerful. Uh, so, so powerful, especially with having right around the corner. It just indicates that there's going to be an extreme supply shortage, which is going to lead to an incredible price surge. Okay, that said, just a few more words on Bitcoin. What's interesting is that while, you know, these last few years, we have gone through a bit of a bear market last couple of years, the hash rate has not slowed down and hash the hash rate essentially means the hash rate is the measure of compute power computing power on a cryptocurrency network that serves as a key security indicator um, and since bitcoin is proof of work this indicates the, its strength right as we read here in this tweet it says the upward trajectory of bitcoin's hash rate the btc hash rate has grown significantly over the past few months, despite asset volatility, showcasing the asset's resilience of the potential price drop. So this is just another indicator that Bitcoin's going extremely strong. And on this tweet, this chart, if you can see my screen well, it just shows the action. It's quite small, you see, but let me zoom in for you. You see how it says having at the bottom here? It's just showing the timeline since the beginning of Bitcoin in 2013. Well, the first halving that happened in 2013. And it indicates the pattern that has happened every time. You see green, red, blue, green, red, blue. And within each of these ranges, Bitcoin has done very familiar and similar action, price action. We are currently right, as I just showed you a minute ago, 11 days before the halving. And this is where we're at. So it just gives you an indicator of how much, how much, like, how much of a range Bitcoin has to go if we are, if anything, to follow historical trends. And we know that this bull run is very different than other bull runs because of the, of the Bitcoin ETFs and mass global adoption of Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies and the technology known as blockchain. That said, I'm gonna show a quick clip from Randuner's show today. Very, very interesting. 
He explains the relationship of the having, as I'm sure many of you are wondering, with Bitcoin's price. Here, let's go ahead and play it for you. Let's talk about the halving. So the reason why the market started moving, I think, is because people woke up to the fact that the halving is here. It's only 10 days away. And I think people kind of got uh, into the halving, looked at it and said, 10 days away, our portfolio is not ready. And as I said to you earlier on today, um, I said to you that we're 99% of the way towards the halving. So all this hard work that we've done, all this, this preparation that we've done, we're now 1% away from the halving. And most people, as as um, uh, people, most people haven't been talking about it. In fact, more importantly, most people don't really understand what the halving means. And I don't only mean on Bitcoin and on the costs, because on the cost side, it's pretty obvious what the halving actually means. Because remember, when the halving happens, halving, halvening, when that happens, the amount of Bitcoin that the miners earn for producing a single Bitcoin is halved. So if they were getting 12 and a half Bitcoin, they're now getting 6.25. If they were getting 6.25, they're getting 3.125 Bitcoin for every block, for every Bitcoin that they manufacture, which means that they effectively their costs are about to double. The costs of producing a Bitcoin are about to double. Now, why is that important? Because specifically, if you look at this chart over here, it shows the Bitcoin production cost. And what it shows is that Bitcoin never, ever drops below its production cost. And if the production cost is $30,914, um, the electricity of the production cost, then when the amount of Bitcoin that you can actually farm halves, that means that you need to now pay $60,000 in electricity. Now, on the one hand, Bitcoin has never gone below the electricity cost of production, except here it spiked below, and this was during COVID. And this was like for a very short period of time. And so we can kind of say that if this holds true, then effectively, we, we may not see Bitcoin under 60000 again after the halving. The other thing is that you can imagine that the cost of equipment to mine Bitcoin is about to double. So you can see this is the floor price of the S9s and whatever else. The cost of production, the cost of the machines is about to double, which means that if you look at it over the next period of time, effectively, the price of Bitcoin has to remain above double where it was in the previous cycle. So a lot of people say, okay, well, if the price of Bitcoin today is 70000 it needs to go to 144000 It doesn't work like that. Because what you've got to do is you've got to take all the period into account and say, on a four-year four period, on average, the price of Bitcoin has to remain double in order for the miners to be as profitable as they were in the last cycle. So what we'll do is we'll soon do an analysis of if you take the weighted average price of Bitcoin in the last four years, what you would need to achieve in order for the miners to achieve the same level of profitability. And that could give us a, a route for what. I will pause it there because it's a lot of information, but I hope that made sense. Basically just explains in many words why Bitcoin is going to be going up in price. And that's because there's a relationship with how much it costs to produce a Bitcoin considering the equipment, considering everything. And historically, as each my, as each having passes, the price goes up. And we know that as Bitcoin's price goes up, altcoins go up. Okay, that said, I want to play another video for you that really sets the tone and transitions us into what I want to talk about today. So let me go ahead and play this for you, but just a quick word. In this video, this is Pomp. For those of you who are new to crypto, he is a big thought leader. He also has his own channel. I think it's called Pomp. Uh, his name is Anthony Pompliano. And just extremely knowledgeable. And he's on CNBC explaining the value of meme coins. And it really just, you know, it just really, really explains, man, just listen to it. It explains the relationship of our currencies globally, which we call fiat in, in crypto, and how much they're devaluing, which is so sad. I'm sure many of you can relate in your own way. Um, you know, just even with the printing, the mass printing in the U.S. ever since the C word, COVID. And, you know, but other countries like Venezuela or Argentina or, you know, Nigeria, this is very, very real to them. And this is why people 
you know, in, in a logical way are opting into meme coins because it's like, it's like the lottery, okay, except more people can win. So here you go. Let us, let me play it. I'm saying what we are calling out is just a societal trend, right? We've become a society of gamblers. If you, if you think about it, we have zero day options. Now we're more than 50% of options trading. We have sports betting, right? We have meme coins trading like 1980s boiler room, you know, uh, penny stocks. This is all happening. And so again, why is that occurring? The dollar has lost 25% of its purchasing power in four years. We have $1.1 trillion of uh, credit card debt. We have 43 million Americans that have federal student debt. The average balance is $37,000. People have lost hope. They do not have hope. How are you supposed to live in a country where it is cheaper to rent than buy a home in 50 major metros? You don't have hope. And so what do you do? You, you, you think gamble? this is a lottery ticket. This is a gamble. I, I think that if you go and you buy a lottery ticket, it's 300 million to one odds. I think there's people right now saying, you know what? A meme coin has better odds than a, a lottery ticket. I think there's a lot of people who say, <coughs> pick your access. If you want to pick your, I'm saying what well, we're. You see, you have higher odds of making money with meme coins, much higher, actually. Way, 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 way higher than you do with the lottery. But yeah, it's really, really interesting what's going on on a global scale. There's a giant shift happening between traditional old world mentality, old world currencies, or, you know, old world way of handling money to a completely digital, completely, you know, decentralized for those of you who choose to custody or hold your own money crypto, digital money. But this is a good segue into talking about what's going on. So just quickly, let's read what this tweet says. It says the Coinbase smart wallet, which I'll show you in a minute, is the most important new product since base. The most and the most consequential customer consumer wallet launched in the last five years, other than Commonwealth, you guys. I will share a little bit about Commonwealth in a minute, but it says the last piece to bring billions of people on chain because it just works. So in order to understand this tweet, let's go and look at what's on the right hand of the screen over here. So Coinbase, most of you will know who Coinbase is, right? It's one of the largest um, American crypto exchange, centralized exchange not a decentralized exchange, they're very different. And if you've seen previous videos, you know there's Coinbase USA, and then there's Coinbase, just Coinbase, and that is for every, every other nationality. And Coinbase partnered with Ethereum and created what you see here, Base. And Base Network is a new Ethereum layer two okay or a company you could think of it that way a project as we call it in crypto that's incubated as i was saying a minute ago by coinbase and built on the open source op or optimism stack which is an open source developer you know code base basically that can be used to create any product and it's so interesting as I've shared in previous videos, so much liquidity or money is moving right now from other ecosystems, other launch pads, from Ethereum, from Solana primarily, into Base. There is not a token yet, but there is an airdrop opportunity. So I would encourage you to go follow them on Twitter, Twitter X at Base. B A S E. In a minute, we'll see their website, but we can click on it just so you can see it once and for all. This is what it looks like. Okay, base is a secure, low cost, builder friendly Ethereum 2 built to bring the next generation on chain. So, extremely interesting. And you can access it, I believe, through its wallet. Frankly, all of these projects deserve a deep dive. I just wanted to bring you the full news right now, but I promise I will, be, I will be making detailed videos on each of these projects just so that you're completely secure and feeling confident in 
the projects that you choose to invest in if you do indeed choose to invest in any of the projects I mentioned. Once again, I'm not sponsored and I am just an independent investor like you. So anyway, back to base in just one week. This is why I'm so bullish on base. And um, I'm going to go find out how I can also get some airdrops. I haven't done it myself. It's just been a very busy time. But what's interesting is you can invest in the tokens or the meme coins, especially on base, which I will share in a minute with you as well and tell you which ones I am most bullish on. But that said, just some news on base. It says in just one week, the total amount of stable coins, stable coins are like your USDT, USDC, um, you know, you're definitely like Solana would be, Sol would be like a stable coin. Um, stable coins are like the equivalent of dollars, like a base currency that you use to go buy the companies or projects based, you know, built on that layer. But anyway, the total amount of stable coins in circulation on base grew about <laughs> almost 50%. Wow, 49%. And remarkably has grown about 690% since March. That's unbelievable. Base now has over 1.57 billion of stable coins on the network. More than Optimism, StarkNet, and ZK Sync combined, a tra and trailing only Arbitrum, 3.7 7 billion in terms of L2 competitors. So Arbitrum is the only competitor unbelievable you see arbitrum at the top then it's base that has overtaken optimism mantle zk sync etc so this is why we're so bullish on base and frankly you don't have to believe me just the numbers indicate it you know which is why you should be taking a look if you're here to make money which i assume all of you are then you need to be looking at base network Okay, so once again, base processing more transactions than Ethereum, Optimism Blast, StarkNet, and DYDX combined. Amazing. This is their website once again. And this is what I wanted to share with you. So you can now download, can download Coinbase's wallet. I have not done it, but I will be. Make a note. Okay. Seriously, guys, there is so much to keep up with. It's just, you need to be dedicated. Okay, so amazing because you can just natively or, you know, just directly buy so many crypto tokens directly on Coinbase's wallet now with your credit card linked to it, you know, which is what the world needs if they're going to be entering crypto. So amazing. And then this, this tweet really validates what I'm saying, which is, let me explain how big the launch of smart wallets is. Look at these stats on the base chain. 4 million users is not too bad. Coinbase, which incubated base, remember, has 70 million users. Then add this to the 70 million new users that can buy these base tokens directly from the Coinbase smart wallet amazing so it just shows you the room to grow and the potential honestly if you have followed the news over the weekend you would know this there's so much to cover i can't cover it in detail in this video but basically there were some um how could i put it there were some unsuccessful transactions on solana over the weekend and many were complaining about this because Solana is projected to be, you know, one of the giants this bull run, and so many people are heavily invested in it. And last bull run, and I've covered this in previous, I think in my first few videos ever, I've covered that, you know, what happened last bull run, that Solana network broke, is the way you would say it, which means it didn't actually like break like forever, but temporarily like a website. If you send too much, if there's too much business, if there's too many visitors to a website, it'll break temporarily because the server in the background is not capacitated to handle that much volume. Well, the same thing can happen to a crypto network. It doesn't mean that it's 
broken overall. It just means that for that moment, there was such a surge that it couldn't keep up. And that's what happened over the weekend. So people got worried. I may have been one of those people. And I didn't sell anything, but it really just made me think. And because I want to be transparent with you guys, I just want to let you know how I'm thinking about it. And it really just made me think and, you know, just connect the dots, which is what I like to do. Um, you know, if base is growing at such an unbelievable rate, and if just statistically we see that base is just a miniature little fraction of the size of Solana's, you know, market cap and uh, fully diluted value or valuation, as you would say, you know, just its full value, which tells us that if they're comparable in any way, which base is, because it's backed, I mean, it's built on optimism and it's compatible, you know, with Ethereum, which makes it compatible pretty much with all tokens. And it's got a small market cap in relationship to Solana. It basically tells us that if base were to go to the moon, this bull run, which it, you know, it could, and just, I think it will for sure. And many think it will for sure. Just based on the signs, right? You just have to connect, read all the signs and make a conclusion from it. But if base could become as big as Solana and it's designed, its technology is superior with no outages, then it really just made me think about pulling out. I'm sorry. I really am sorry if anyone from Solana is hearing this, but I have to be honest, it's really concerning to me. Because there was a few outages last bull run and they had the whole bear market to improve this technology and they didn't. And now it's the bull run again and it's happening again, but on a larger scale. So I think because they're already big, because they already have a large community and a huge ecosystem, I think they're going to do well. They're still going to pump like crazy. It's just my opinion, but it's a well-founded one. But if there's a new competitor in town where so much business is going to, you can check out all the tools. Nansen is a tool. N-A-N-S-E-N. -E you know, there's Kaito. There's, um, there's so many tools to show them, that show the money is moving to base. Like, it, it really just made me think of pulling out, like, at least 50%, honestly. Like, you have to protect yourself this bull run, and you can't just be loyal to be loyal. This isn't, like, a relationship with your lover or your husband or your boyfriend. This is money. Money. You cannot go down with the ship unless you're the captain. If you're the captain, you're expected to go down with the ship. But if you are here to make money... This is my advice. You protect your money. I would not be overexposed into Solana. I would be exposed, but I would definitely move some of that, a chunk of that, at least 50% of that into base. That's my two cents. But anyway, enough on this. Let's move along. That said, the biggest meme coin, and we know meme coins are a representation of culture it's funny that's why the best memes and this is why you'll see what i highlighted in a minute but you know the best memes are universal they're hilarious and oftentimes they make fun of something a little inappropriate or satirical as you would say you know and brett is one of those names <laughs> excuse me if this is your name but it's as white as it comes, you know? I'm sorry, I'm probably offending someone. It's okay, I'm Latina and many other things, you know, and a woman. So I get, you know, <laughs> you have to just learn to take one, okay? Um, Brett is 
projected as you'll see in one of these tweets you know it's not a fact but it's just super funny that's how you know which memes are going to be the most successful it's not because it's someone's cat you know some famous person's cat no i mean there is hemol you know vitalik's cat which i've covered in previous videos i think it's gonna fly but only within ethereum's ecosystem you know what i mean like if people are not diehard ethereum lovers then they're not going to care <laughs> so much about vitalik's cat you know but a project or a, a funny meme coin like nyan cat which is like an internet legend i believe there's a nyan cat now on base as well but there's one on solana as well and um i believe on solana and one on ethereum um that's universal you know and it's because of the sound of the nine cat song anyway long story short brett on base network is let me just read it for you it says brett is about to be one of the only meme coins in history to reach a billion dollar market cap and the first ever to do it on base every single meme that ever hit one billion ran to three billion History is being made. Congrats to Jesse Pollack. He is from, he's a contributor at BASE and all early BASE adopters. This is a huge win for the entire ecosystem because of course, as people ape in or like run, you know, to buy bread on BASE, they end up learning about BASE and they end up using BASE network, which benefits the whole BASE ecosystem. So it's a win-win and honestly meme coins are a great way of bringing people into crypto and just getting them introduced to the technology the way of buying things the mindset the culture it's really all quite hilarious even if i'm not laughing right now anyway this is awesome and it's not too late you can still go check out brett um let's just click on it i'm just gonna find brett here's brett i'm gonna follow brett it's just ridiculous. <laughs> it's just funny. Okay. Just, it's funny. Small community considering all. And this guy, I recognize him. He is like mean coin. This is all he's like obsessed with. Okay. Eretonimo, Tijin. He has a YouTube channel as well. You can follow him. But um, he's following Brett, which is a good indicator. Because once again, that's what you want to do. And so is Mario in a fall. Brand Nooners, of course, following them. This is how you know a project's good when you see big crypto thought leaders or influencers following them. But anyway, that's a little nugget for you. Many of you may already know, but some of you are new in my channel. So I'm sharing this with you now and explaining why it's valuable. So the spreadsheet you're looking at is actually from Crypto Banter. So thank you to the Crypto Banter team. Um, but I made a copy of it. He shared it publicly, so I'm not stealing. And I'm giving them credit, you know, so thank you. Um, but I highlighted the ones I am bullish on because I'm not investing in everything. I'm not chasing everything. It is a strategy call. Some people, for instance, would put like $100 into each of these. Right. If you have that much money to spare, keep in mind, there's 17. No, there's 16 of these top tokens on base. Top memes, sorry, on base network. So if there are 16, if you were willing to gamble with $1,600, then you could buy $100 of each of these. You know, or according to the value, the value you want to bet on. And then you could just see which one moons, you know, which one goes up in price. And if even one of these hits like a billion dollar market cap, which is basically just the value of the tokens circulating times their price, that's how you determine it. Then you've not only made all your money back, but you could be like a millionaire <laughs> just off of one successful investment. So that's a, that is a strategy, you know, it's like throwing your seed all over the all over your garden you know on the rocks you know like everywhere and just guessing you know what's gonna what's gonna launch but 
in my case, and because I feel responsible to you guys, I am not going to recommend all of these projects. The only ones I personally feel pretty solid about, as I mentioned a moment ago, a moment ago would be Brett. Nor me, because it's freaking funny. <laughs> it's just funny. Okay, nor me, and I know many people that I bullish on it as well. And Nyan Cat, because it's an internet legend. That's it. Those are the only three I feel bullish on. But it's up to you guys. But be warned that the other ones, and maybe Roost. You know, but it literally is up to you. No one can, that's why in crypto they'll say, and maybe Shiba Inu because Shiba's big on Ethereum. But this is such a personally personal decision. You cannot blame me. You can't blame anyone else. I'm telling you the ones I feel the most solid about, and then that's it. And if I had to pick one, it'd be Brett, period. Wait for a dip and buy in. Okay, those are my two cents on memes on base. Next, just some quick news on BRC20. BRC20 is basically a standard or like code, right? It's a protocol on Bitcoin's network that basically allows for projects to be built on because Bitcoin is, you know, a little bit of a dinosaur. It works and it's like the golden standard in crypto and in terms of decentralization. And every crypto project has pretty much been inspired off of Bitcoin. But that said, it's not like, because it's like such a giant, transactions take a long time to go through. So anyway, BRC20 is like this solution standard on Bitcoin. But that said, the BRC20 ecosystem is on fire, as you can see in this tweet, possibly fueled by Bitcoin's having. Interesting. It says the BRC20 market cap has skyrocketed by over 23%. So this is other in terms of investment opportunities, which is what I bring you on this channel, along with fundamental information explained in the best way possible for you. And please always leave your questions in the comments and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Um, and join my Telegram community because I have a team there dedicated to helping you and I pop in there all the time. Um, so zoomed in here, these are the top coins by market cap on BRC20. The one I'm bullish on would be Pups, where you see at the bottom of my screen, Pups. Pepe, as you see above, personally, I sold out of. I kept, hmm, I kept maybe not even 10, maybe like 10% of my holdings. And I moved them into Pepe coin, which I will show you in a minute. Because Pepe coin not Pepe, the way you see here. The Pepe coin has like a ring around it. Um, they're the originals. So that's why I moved out of this Pepe coin ordinals. But if you've seen my previous videos or go check them out, you'll see I made a whole video dedicated to the original Pepe coin because it's connected to Base AI, which is a protocol built on Base Network, as I'm covering right now in this video. That said, sorry if I'm breathing loud, I need a new mic. Believe it or not, this is a good mic, but I think I need one that's much louder for my voice. All right, so this is a copy of the opportunities on Bitcoin. Once again, this came from Ran, but I went ahead and highlighted only one for you guys. The only one I feel confident to share with you, which is Pops in Yellow. And sorry, and Zeus Network, because as you can read on the screen, it's a Bitcoin layer two, or like a DAP, decentralized app, or like a company, right? That's built on uh, Bitcoin. That's bringing Bitcoin liquidity into Solana. And we know, even though I said all the things that I did about Solana, we know that Solana is still a giant. And it's still going to do good for a while because what makes a crypto project good or solid is its community. If its community is loyal, as in life, right, then we know that the project will do good. And Solana has like soul soldiers. It has like a really fanatical community. So 
they're going to do that. Okay. And anyway, it may solve one of the problems as well. Um, pretty much it helps Bitcoin and it helps Solana. It helps both. So, and they raised 8 million in a round or an investment round led by Mechanism Capital a Fund. And they recently launched their own token. So go check them out, Zeus, if you have not already. And apparently they have the potential to fill the gap left by FTX. If you guys were not around last bull run, that's pretty much how the bull run ended last time was with this whole scandal with FTX. One of the most successful and well-known and popular exchanges last bull run. They were bringing on celebrities and um, basketball players to promote them, spending a lot on advertisement, and then turned out like they were doing some shady stuff behind the scenes and it caused a massive collapse, which then just made the whole crypto market collapse. That said, um, apparently this project, this layer two Zeus network is supposed to, has the potential quote unquote, you can't see me right now, but quote unquote, I'm doing bunny ears with my hands. They have the potential to fill that gap. So I may buy some, but not like I'm, but not like so much. Like I'm, I'm going to buy some. That's all I'm going to say. And I didn't front run you guys. Front running means when, like, for instance, I would know something powerful is about to happen for a project and instead of telling you i go buy some first and then i tell you <laughs> that's front running okay i have done this before but it's never maliciously and if you join my telegram community i join i share my investment opportunities in there with you guys first so i'm not trying to front run you guys and really it's it's spoken more so in a malicious way like when people have the intention of selling on you as soon as you join. That's kind of like the intention behind front running. Okay, so that's sad. That's what Ansem's saying, right? So he says Zeus is the only coin currently capturing the intersection of Bitcoin and Solana. So what I told you was basically this, based on what Ansem said. All right, so moving along, Thorchain. I'm going to share a few projects I'm super, super bullish on. I cannot spend so much time on them because I want to respect your time. And there's just so much going on that I have to just cover them a bit quickly for you. Okay. But here's Thorchain. The ticker is Rune. And they're incredible. They're basically decentralized, meaning nobody owns it. So nobody can hack it because it doesn't doesn't hold it doesn't custody as you would say in finance any assets it's simply a tool it's a it's like a layer two it's uh facilitates transactions cross chain which would be called interoperability which is a big big topic or narrative in crypto all the time because as you would know, there's Ethereum, there's Solana, now there's Base, there's Polygon, there's Arbitrum, there's Avalanche, there's Cosmos. There are so many chains. BNB, you know, there's Bitcoin, there's, there are so many different chains. And every single chain requires you to own their token and be on their network and their wallets to transact. Well, that's not very user friendly. That's not, that's not easy, right? This is why your mom and your grandma can join crypto because not even your friends sometimes or even your sister because it's hard. So congratulations if you're here because crypto is not easy. It's very fun, I will say. Once you get in, super fun. You just have to be willing to do the work. But that said, Thor Chain as you see on the screen, you know, is, is a network that facilitates native asset or all of these tokens, right, that belong to the network. It facilitates native asset settlement between Bitcoin, Ethereum, BNB, Avalanche, Cosmos, pretty much everyone that I just told you, and Dogecoin. So it's awesome. It solves a real huge problem in the crypto space. So you can launch their 
Um, where's the app? So you can swap here, you click at the top, trade Bitcoin, you know, this is the price of Rune is $7.68. I appreciate they put this on their website because other crypto projects don't. I feel like every single crypto project should have its price at the top. It should tell you where you can buy it at the top. Like, why do they make people dig around? You know, it'd make my job a lot easier. <laughs> every single website in crypto should have all of its links. Like every other website. I do not understand why that doesn't happen. So I'm sorry, guys, if you guys are a little confused sometimes. But anyway, come check them out. And um, yeah, you can use them. Thorchain, extremely bullish on them. Next, I'm going to run through very briefly. Paid Ignition. I actually hand drew the font for this logo back in my day. And I know the color here should have been different, but I left the company before that was done. But that said, upcoming projects. This is the money. You guys are very, very welcome. Go to ignition.paidnetwork.com. Click on upcoming projects. These are the projects that are going to be launching on Paid Network's Ignition Launchpad. We have Metropolis, Umoja, and Commonwealth. I actually, my team and I, we worked on the lo we, we made the logo for this project. Commonwealth. Very, very proud of it. Anyway, if you go to ignition.paidnetwork.com, as you can see at the top of my screen, and you go to this upcoming projects page, you can click on this little globe, this little ball, you see where my cursor is, and it takes you to each website. And if you wanna see the description, I love that it does this, so easy. It says, Metropolis is an ecosystem emerging commerce, gaming, social fi, you know, or social finance, art and culture to craft a comprehensive experience. Amazing. Then we have, Umoja, the description is, I heard a lot about this one actually. It's a pioneering smart money protocol, which allows users to embed automated investment strategies like hedging, for instance, to protect specific investment um, strategies into digital assets via synthetics. Um, which are like versions of the original token. That's my very high level explanation. Enabling self trading, volatility protection, and yield optimization. It's a giant. That's all I'm going to tell you. It's a giant. And then there's Commonwealth, which is my favorite. It's a powerful all in one platform that makes investing in Web3 simple, like this whole Coinbase wallet. But I would say better because it incorporates deal flow or investment opportunities that come from the very, very, very top funds that typically these deals don't get to you or me or like the normies in the space until months later. You know, and we know that that's how you actually make your money in crypto and in stocks, right, is you have to be given an opportunity to invest in the project when it's at pennies worth per, per token. And if you can get in when it's dirt cheap, once it goes to round two, you know, there's always like a friends and family round, then there's series A, then there's series B, then there's, you know, the first public round or private sale, sorry. And then there's like, um, you know, public round one and two, you know, usually what you're seeing on launch pads, like here right now on Ignition, you're seeing the public round when you're buying it, like times, I don't know, times 10, the price, maybe. The smartest and the richest people in crypto and in the world, they get into investment opportunities when they're at pennies per token. And that is what the project Commonwealth here, as you can see, which means common, like making wealth common, making it accessible to 
That's why you see the W scratched out. We worked on a whole theory behind that. It's all streets, not Wall Street anymore. It's all streets for everybody. It's bringing the top investment opportunities to everybody. It's amazing. So it's amazing because when you invest, if you were to get into this uh, public sale on Ignition Launchpad for Commonwealth, it's like two birds with one stone because you're getting into a, a lucrative public sale. And then on top of it, what you're buying is a little piece, a little share okay, of Commonwealth's token that basically gives you like a residual income of the value of Commonwealth. Okay, and that's a really high level and I know there's many more details to how it works because it's, it's not so simple. Um, it's per fund, there's specific funds running within it. Yeah, anyway, go read about them is all I'm gonna say. These are their websites. This is join, it's join, like to join a party, right? Join commonwealth.xyz. This is the website. Go here, learn all about it, okay? The second one, this is their web, This is their Twitter. This is where you follow the news about them. And if you wanna learn more, just hear from the founders, hear the way it works, all that, go to their recent AMA. They did a whole, here you need to come here i would play it for you but it's gonna it's gonna just um take a long time this video is already kind of long but you can go to their twitter find the talk they did and listen to it and you'll hear from the top like how it works anyway moving along this is umoja that's also going to launch on paid network um paid networks launch pad and it's that smart investing, hedging, like money protocol. It's not a bot, it's like a whole protocol. It's amazing. All right, that's the next super hot token, okay? And you should know that the project's paid network, and I'm not paid for this. Yes, I'm holding paid tokens, but that's honestly not why I'm saying it. If anything, I feel very fortunate that I know this project. I know the founders. I see them working every single day. And right now they have a lot going on. They're going to be making some huge announcements, uh, revealing how the strategy most launch pads are using to launch their projects is scammy in nature. And they're pretty much using you, like everyone that falls for it and goes, you know, like they say, oh, the projects on our launch pad do like 100x on launch, you know, and everyone's like, oh my gosh, I'm going to go invest in this other launch pad because I can make like 100x, you know, like 100 times my investment. But that's just a lie. Like the metric they're using is like the highest, you know, price point after launch that their projects reach. But we all know that the higher a project pumps, the faster it drops, right? Because it's not real. It's too much, too much buy pressure, you know, which equals sell pressure. And then the project just dumps. And then it's really hard to recover. Trust me. I know I've been through it like so many times. So paid is changing. Paid is changing the narrative in crypto. It's only launching one or two projects a month, and you know the projects they're launching are gold, they're money. Not only are they going to launch in the short term, but they're going to definitely be long-term investments. Imagine if you could have invested in Coinbase in the early days, you know, or Facebook in the early days. That is what these investment opportunities are like. But okay, and this is Metropolis, which is like a whole artist ecosystem. You can actually create your own avatar. I'm going to go do this. I've actually been thinking of making my, my YouTube channel into like anime avatar, you know, sort of style. So let me know what your thoughts are on that. Because then it could be super cool. <laughs> and I won't have to do my hair and makeup. 
Anyway, here is Thor Chain's information as we saw a moment ago. Just so you can see it, you go to CoinGecko, you type in Thor Chain. Rune, as you can see me highlighting on the screen, that's the ticker. It's market cap. See how its price is pretty good in the last 24 hours. Last seven days, volatile, right? But a lot of sideways motion, which tells us that in the long run, there's a lot of room. This is what this chart says. It says there's a lot of room for it to grow and pump. So if you haven't bought some Thor chain, I'm not saying you should, but I'm saying I am. And I will be. And many I know will be as well. And then just a quick word on the whole like lawsuit that Coinbase has been going through, you know, because that, that may be something you're thinking about or somebody tells you about like, oh my gosh, why are you going to go invest in any token associated with Coinbase because they're in a lawsuit and blah, 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 you know, which has been a little troubling for a while now. But we have some great news that basically um, the U.S. Court of Appeals found that Coinbase, um, they confirmed that the secondary sales of crypto by Coinbase do not violate the Securities Exchange Act. So they're not in violation. This is amazing, amazing, amazing news. Okay. This is Pepe Coin original. Pepe Coin. Ticker is Pepe Coin. All right, there's no market cap. Don't be alarmed. Every website's different. If we were to go to coin, uh, coin market cap, it'd be different. All right, you can see the contract address here. And then let's go look at the Frigazi. Let's go look at the Frigazi. This is the fake one, y'all. I know my text inside came out. Do not buy this one. It's not financial advice, but there's going to be something called the Pepinine, and it's going to be when Pepe coin, the one I just told you about, flips the fake Pepe. So not financial advice, do as you please, but I just moved my money from the other one into this one. Because if you buy this one, you can go watch my previous video and learn how you can stake or go deposit your Pepe coin on Pepe coins website and it'll start to they'll start to airdrop you base AI coin, which is the money, you guys. It's built exclusively on the base chain, as you can see here on the screen. So this is money. This video has been jam-packed with you for you guys. I know it's extremely long. I am so sorry, but there was so much to share with you, and I promise I'm coming with some tutorials. Just hang tight. Trust me, I know that the having is around the corner and I feel an enormous sense of urgency to bring you information and a system that's going to empower you for this bull run. And I will be here for you guys, okay? I'm like every day ramping up things behind the scenes to prepare and get us in better shape and position to help you. All right. I love you guys very much. This video is very long, so I'm going to go to bed now. It's almost 3 a.m. I love you.